Hello everyone, my name is Fox. We're going to be reviewing the King Kong 2 Pro Controller. This is the wave of Switch Pro Controller clones that have been going around. However, this one dials it up to 11. It is quite literally on steroids. So in the box, we have the travel case that comes with it, which is super nice. Keeps it pretty compact, as compact as you can get it, but you can just throw it in a bag and not worry about it actually getting mucked up. They also included a few extra accessories here, just so that we can kind of go over and talk about the business end of what makes this most exciting and then in here they have the USB-C to USB-A cable that is six feet long and it's a flat cable I've opened it up already you can see it right here we have a few different instances that we're going to be going here I have a GPD Win 3 here I have a SwoLED Switch OLED and the Steam Deck here we're going to be connecting to all of them in a moment we're going to go over some of the features of the controller itself so we're going to go ahead and open up the travel case that it comes with and you can take this out which is super nice so we'll go ahead and move that on the side now, the important bit here that is probably the most noteworthy is that it's using hall-based analog sensors. So if we take a look here, what's happening here is there is a piece of metal and then there's magnets all around that are detecting the, the magnet's sensitivity as it gets closer to any particular region. And that is how it determines the analog sensitivity. These analog sticks should look pretty similar because they look like they are pretty much identical to what was on the IMEO Next. So we're going to be kind of reviewing the sensitivity on these controllers as well. But for anyone that wants that sweet hall sensor goodness on the analog sticks, these are what you're going to be getting. We're going to go through all the different modes and type of features that are available. So now that we've done the introduction, let's briefly go over the controller itself. Obviously, the standout feature here is the hall-based analog sticks. Then we also have hall-based analog triggers as well. Even though the Pro Controller on the Switch Pro Controller is just digital, they did include analog controls here if you wanted to use it on the Steam Deck or on a Windows-based machine. So here we're going to be using the Android mode. And that just basically advertises itself as an Xbox 360 controller with some added features. And we're going to go over that in a moment. And then for here, I'm just using X input mode. Uh, and you can also swap these controllers, uh, these face buttons over so that it's more similar to how an Xbox controller is. Obviously, you can see B-A-Y-X here. This is a Nintendo form factor. You'd want to flop these over so that it's A-B-X-Y so that it's Windows or Xbox control style. On the back, we have a little bit of like raised dimples on here for a grip. The only part that I don't like about the controller is pretty much this back piece. It looks pretty bland. Um, and that's all I really have to say about it is like a negative is just cosmetically it looks chintzy. Uh, but in hand, it actually is quite nice to feel. Overall, I am, I've been pretty impressed with this. We're going to go over the features in a moment. Since this is ostensibly a Switch Pro controller, we're going to go ahead and start this up. So we're just going to go ahead and click this button real quick. We're going to go into the Switch mode here. We're going to wait for this to activate. And the SwoLED, the Switch OLED that I have here, is asleep. And we're going to go ahead and get it to power on the Switch. So you can see that it'll actually wake up the Switch OLED. We'll go ahead and get it started. Okay, let me move this up just so that you can see this better. Okay, so now that you have a better view of this, you can see that it just operates just fine. If we were to go ahead and press the home button, we would jump straight to the home screen. Naturally, if we do the screenshot, we'll take a screenshot. Now, there are a few things that we want to go over. Like, here is basically a macro button. So if I go ahead and hold this for three seconds, and then I'm going to do this, press it again. Now, when I press this again, that macro will start going. So you press it once to do it once, and if you press it twice, one, two, it'll keep on doing it continuously. Now they do offer a feature where you can actually put this controller into a professional mode and then save your macros and share them or just collect your macros for specific games. Uh, I'm not gonna be going that in, into that in this particular video, but it does. it's basically a more advanced macro mode. So we're gonna go ahead and stop that. In the center here, which is basically like a little gear icon, this one will be go ahead and choose different types of configurations. So very quickly here, I can show you if I were to just press X here, I just jump once. But if I hold this and I press X, this is basically a turbo mode. Additionally, if I do this and I press X, now it rumbled twice. And what that means is that when I press X, it is toggled as a turbo fire mode. 
then you just go ahead and press this and press X again. Now that'll work over, if you basically hold this and hit any of these buttons, it will go ahead and do turbo mode. The only difference is that we hold this gear icon, the settings icon, and hit left bumper or left trigger. This is actually to do uh, gyro for these particular buttons. You will force gyro on, even if a game doesn't support it or not. Now let's say that you wanted to connect this to a computer or you just wanted to swap these face buttons. So look, if I press X here, you can see that I jump. But if I hold the settings button and press the plus key, I've swapped these keys. So now when I press X, it doesn't do it. So you can very quickly swap between the face button layout how you want. Very quickly that way. Now because this is effectively a Switch Pro controller first, if we were to go ahead and use like the throw command in Breath of the Wild, you can see that I could move around gyro-wise just like you can on a Switch Pro controller to move the round. Now what's cool is that when we go into other modes we can actually map this key over here to force gyro on Windows games that wouldn't actually support gyro itself, which is kind of cool and we'll step through that in a moment. The last thing that I want to touch on is the King Kong 2 Pro Controller actually has amiibo support right here. So I have already enabled amiibo mode right now, so if I go over here and I grab my amiibo and I put it right on here. It works like it should. So if you were in the market for, ostensibly this is definitely a Switch Pro controller first, but it is a Switch Pro Plus Plus controller. So if you wanted a controller that did more than just being just for the Nintendo Switch, obviously you can connect this to a PC as well, but because it has features to connect to Android or PC as X input mode, it does a little bit more and you can kind of map the face buttons a little bit differently. It's a little bit better in that regard. All right, now that we've gone ahead and put the Switch OLED controller away, we're gonna go ahead and connect to the Steam Deck. Now I've already gone ahead and done that. What's nice about this is that once it's already paired and you're switching between modes, it'll automatically go there. Additionally, one of the other real nice things about this is, is that if you tap, double tap this, it actually turns the controller off, which is super nice. A lot of features on these types of controllers don't include that, and they resort to an auto off function, which is not something that I particularly like because it's like kind of wasteful. So we're gonna go ahead and click here. Now, if we hold this button down, we're gonna switch to the next input method. Now we're gonna switch over past the windows because GPD Win 3 is there. I'm gonna go onto Android because that's what I've configured the Steam Deck with, which sees it as an Xbox 360 controller. So now if I kind of move around here, you can see that working like that. All right, just so you can get a better view of this, you can see that it's kind of moving around. Now, let's say that you wanted to, if you see I hold down left trigger and that zooms in, when I get the gun later on in control, I'd be able to move around and fire. But let's say that you wanted to actually have gyro assist on here. What you can do is you press the settings button here, you hold that down and you press this. Now when I hold left trigger, now when I move the controller. The only thing I wish is, is you have to move it like a steering wheel to go left and right, as opposed to uh, how it works on the Switch, you can actually, I don't know if it's like pitcher you are or whatever. When you go like this on the Switch, it actually goes left and right, which is something I prefer instead of turning like a steering wheel. You can also increase the sensitivity. There's three levels of sensitivity. So if you hold this down and press it again, it'll rumble twice. Now, if I do this, we have a higher degree of sensitivity. So up and down and right and left. So you can arguably kind of work with it and you know you still use the analog stick but fine tune with the gyro control this isn't super ideal for me in this particular case because i don't like turning left and right like a steering wheel uh so this is kind of a limited functionality and again if you hold this down this rumbled three times now we're at max sensitivity here so you can see how kind of exaggerated the gyro movement here is which is not something i like and you press it again and it does a long rumble to indicate that it's off. So that's pretty cool, and that works across all the different modes if you really wanted it to. Now, the only thing that I wanted to touch base on here is we're going to go ahead and press the Steam button here, and I'm going to go down to Settings. Now, if I go to Bluetooth, you can see it says Xbox Wireless Controller. With it in Android mode, it is basically advertising itself as an Xbox controller, which is what Android wants to map to a lot of times anyway. So using it as an Xbox controller on Android mode is ideal in a lot of instances, but I wanted to connect to it on the Steam Deck here just because I can have a mode for the Steam Deck and when I go to the Windows mode, it'll light up on the GPD Win 3 down here. Before I get to that, let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the sensitivity of this. So if we go to the controller and I go to open here, now if we go in here, I press Y. 
Now, remember, I've gone ahead and already flopped this over, so even though I'm pressing X, you can see right here, I can say start testing for Y, which is where Y should be on an Xbox controller, even though it's X here, right? We flopped that around. So you just press that, and now Y is here. If you really wanted the buttons to line up and be like how they are on a, a Nintendo console, like a Nintendo format, you can do it that way. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the dead zones here. Now, the one thing that I want to kind of make note of, you can see if I just push it just a little bit, kind of blops right out, kind of just boink, boink, boink. Now, this is the, similar to how the Steam Deck's analog sticks are as well. However, if we take a look at how far our range is, you can see right about here that we're kind of just approaching the edge of it. Now, one of the things that you can do is if you hold uh, LR, a and press left it recalibrates the analog sticks as well as the l2 and r2 however even though we are doing that i've not found it to be able to eclipse this circle so we do have i want to say full range but it's slightly limited and this is kind of similar to how the i and neo next is but not to the same degree uh it is far enough over that it is fine if we go over to the other controller, you can see that it does the same thing. Now, the other thing that to note here is that if we just push it a little, you can see it just pops out of that dead zone right there, and that's basically where the dead zone kicks in. Now, if I were to go back, right, and I go over to the Steam Dex controller, now I'm using the Steam Dex analogs itself, and if I go ahead and just push it just a little bit, you can see that it also pops out pretty much exactly the same as the King Kong Pro 2 controller does. So that's good. However, if you see that I go to the maximum range here, you can see that I eclipse the range far greater than what is allowed. And this is kind of really important here. And it may not seem like it's necessary and like something that you'd want to just be at the edge of here. You really want to, especially for the diagonals, this is kind of critical that you actually have an extended range here. So this is one thing that I, uh, kind of bothered me about the I Neo Next with these hull-based analog sticks. I, for what it's worth, it's not to the same degree as the I Neo Next is. I haven't had any particular problem with the King Kong Pro 2 controller's analog sticks. However, this is one thing that I hope in a firmware update they can fix. Now, I've already put a firmware update on this particular controller, and there's two actual firmwares that you have to update. So you want to make sure that you find your controller uh, model here, which this is NS09. There's also an NS08. So you want to make sure you upgrade NS09 first, and then there's a bin file that you have to update as well, which opens like a folder on your Windows machine, and you move the bin file over. You need those two firmware update processes to complete for the controller to be upgraded. I hope that there's going to be a firmware update where we can extend the range of the analog sticks. That's the only thing that I could say as a flaw. Otherwise, it is a sensational Switch Pro controller. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and power down the Steam Deck. All right, now we're going to go ahead and connect to the Win 3. Now, I've already gone ahead and set this up with the Windows X input mode here. So we're going to go hold this down for two seconds, let go to switch over. This is for D input. That's something that if you wanted D input, direct input from the long, long ago, uh, it's really not necessary in this particular case anymore. It's pretty old standard. And if you find that you need direct input for any particular game or anything, it's, you know, might be worthwhile, but I haven't really seen the point of it. Anyway, I've gone ahead and gone to Windows mode, and you can see that it auto-paired. Additionally, if we go ahead and take a look at the Win 3 here, you can see the Bluetooth X input compatible input device has been detected. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the properties here. Now if I go ahead and move the analog stick, you can see that we have the full range here. And once again, we have the same type of thing where there's like an almost an artificial circle if we take a look very close here. That we on the diagonals we don't extend all the way out, which is what the Steam Deck does. So this is something that you can find that in some games that when you're pushing in these diagonals that your character may stop running and will start walking instead. All these buttons work uh, and you can also still do, you know, the settings button and then enable gyro in Windows, but you will be using uh, steering wheel functions to do left and right as opposed to the yaw or whatever that is called. Um, but 
this has been probably the best Switch Pro controller clone that I've seen on the market yet. They have these hull-based analog sticks, uh, hull-based analog triggers. It's great for Windows, great for Steam Deck, great for this uh, Switch OLED or even Switch regular. If you were in the market for looking at a Switch Pro controller, I could easily recommend getting this device. The only thing that I wish that they would consider updating is extending the range of the analog stick in the diagonals. That's the one area where I would think that there would be a, a better improvement and um, doing something here to improve how this looks. Uh, that's it. That's my review of the King Kong Pro 2 controller. It is feature packed. It has a ton of crazy things. I mean, literally it took up to 11 in a lot of directions. Really, really like this controller. The analog sticks feel amazing. All the other controls are as good as they are supposed to be. The face buttons feel pretty similar to what the Switch Pro controller is like. So it's an amalgam of a bunch of different controllers with, you know, taking things in a better direction overall. I really love the feel of these hull-based analog sticks. They are wonderful. Everything about this controller is fantastic. To clarify, there is no particular issue at all when running or, or moving anywhere. It can, we are basically just at the very limit when we extend the stick all the way to where a character would run. I would prefer it if we can go over that limit as that would make sure that we wouldn't have any problems whatsoever. So there is no actual problem with this controller. However, that is an, an improvement I would prefer to see. That's it for my look at the King Kong Pro 2 controller. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.